Today, on Voiding Warranties, I'll explain the new brain I've created for the Blue Beast. Voiding Warranties, where accidents happen even when the camera isn't rolling. As you can see by my messy desk, I've been busy with my latest creation. It has an Arduino Nano and a Teensy 3.1 with a built-in CAN interface. Now if you saw my earlier videos on debunking the OBD2 fuel saver, or on adding new parameters to the CAN bus, you'll quickly recognize my Arduino Uno with its CAN shield. It's still acting as an ECU simulator, but I've added one more feature. Earlier, I read the RPM signal to my dash from the CAN bus. This gives me a precise RPM to use in calculations. Now I've added that signal to my ECU simulator. This could easily be used to drive an RX-8 dash without the stock ECU, but instead I'm using it to feed my Teensy an RPM signal just for testing. In this case it's 9000 RPM. The Teensy is also hooked up to a potentiometer that allows me to simulate a 0 to 5 volt MAP signal. This MAP signal, or manifold pressure signal, allows me to do other calculations for water injection, among other things. It also allows me to do boost control. Now let me show you what this baby can do. Here in the Torque app on my phone, I'm reading the 9000 RPM signal and 16 PSI of manifold pressure. Now let's tweak it a little bit and show, show it tracking. On here, the parameter that says B4K is reading the 4000 RPM boost set point. By sending a custom OBD2 command, I can change it. Right now there are two buttons, one is set for full vacuum and the other is set for 13 PSI of boost. With it set for full vacuum, the wastegate pulse width modulation signal is zero or full open. Now I set it to 13 PSI and the wastegate goes to 255 or full closed. Then as pressure tracks up, it is set as a proportional and integral controller. As it goes to set point, the wastegate starts to modulate. Also, the water injection rate is set using a speed density calculation. It's set for approximately 25% water to fuel, and the calculation still needs a little work, but the concept is solid. On this board, I also have four digital inputs. They're set for sensing the ignition coil signals. Also, I have four outputs. These send new signals to the coils. This works together with an eccentric shaft input and an ion sensing input. When it's finally done, it should give me piggyback ignition control. Now for the fun part, explaining how everything works. My first attempt to read eccentric shaft position was using a digital input with a large resistor. That failed because the signal is an AC pulse and a bit noisy. The sensor itself is a variable reluctance sensor and it's similar to an AC generator. Then I tried using something different, an opto isolator. It worked great, but it's still technically not how you're supposed to do it. So I got an actual variable reluctance sensor interface chip and it worked awesome on the bench. With a simulated signal, it would read perfectly, but as soon as I attached it to the car, it didn't want to read correctly at all. So I'm kind of stuck with the opto isolator at this time. It's not what I want to use long term with this project, but at this point it works so I'm not touching it. Now this opto isolator turns the AC pulse into a 5 volt square wave that the Teensy can easily read. From that, I'm able to interpolate the eccentric shaft position within one degree up to 9,000 RPM. Now why would I want to do this? Well, let's say you want to advance a retard timing without programming the ECU. Well, you could make the holes in the eccentric shaft plate bigger and then move it a few degrees one way or the other. It's almost the same as twisting a distributor. I could intercept the eccentric shaft position signal and then generate my own with advance or retard on the fly. But since this is a rotary, that would move both the leading and trailing advance by the same amount. Since the plugs are different and they do different things, I want to advance them differently under different conditions. So I came up with a different solution. I read the ignition coil signal and then I map it to a 0 to 360 degree array. I then play back the array, but I change the point I'm playing back. So I effectively twist the distributor for a single ignition coil, and I can change that all on the fly. 
Now why ion sensing? If you were to map combustion chamber pressure without combustion, it would look something like this. The peak pressure is at top dead center, and it's a gentle curve sloping down after that. Add a spark and burning fuel to the mix, and it changes the curve. Instead of pressure falling after top dead center, it keeps going up with combustion. And at about 15 degrees after top dead center, or 45 on a rotary, you get the best mechanical advantage. That's where the piston is moving quickly, the volume is lowering quickly, and if you get peak pressure right there, you will get the most power safely. Now if you advance timing and move that pressure point to the left, you end up with a much higher peak pressure that can go above your detonation threshold and cause detonation in your fuel. If you move that peak pressure point to the right, then you end up with a much lower pressure that you're not able to take mechanical advantage of, and you end up losing power out your tailpipe. Now detonation happens when the peak pressure, no matter where it is, is above the pressure that the fuel can handle, and the fuel actually explodes all at once. With ion sensing, I get two things. Number one, I can read peak pressure and figure out which side of 45 degrees it's on, and then advance or retard timing to get it there. I also can read detonation even at high RPM with lots of other engine noise. This allows me to do it safely. Together, this should allow me to make power safely and know exactly where my timing should be. I'll go more into this in a later video. Since this video is already running a little bit long, I'm going to break it into two parts. In the next part, I'll go into the actual programming that makes all of this work together. Until next time, this is Voiding Warranties. And if you like what you've seen today, please click like. If you don't like it, click dislike. And if you want to see more stuff like this, click subscribe.